Okay. I will see you better again. <laughs>
because of the announcement and the, the, the decision nationwide to basically make a recommendation based on those metrics. These are not new metrics. That map is not new. It's been up there for a long time. It's just now that there's a recommendation for indoor mask wearing that is tied to levels that were up there. Ingham County still does not fall into the highest transmission risk category. Ingham County Health Officer Linda Vale emphasized that to stay safe and stop the spread, getting vaccinated is the key thing to do. It's a, it's a very simple and easy solution. It really is. It is the best tool we have. Um, it is um, very safe and effective. It is, we certainly are seeing some breakthrough cases, although still rare. You're still looking at a vaccine that's almost 100% effective at preventing hospitalization and death. And I think that really should be what matters to us. In Ingham County, Lucy Venegar. To find a vaccine location near you, visit www.vaccines.gov. With Okemos schools starting August 24th and Hazlitt schools starting on the 25th, Mask requirements are on everyone's mind. For Hazlitt schools, masks will be required indoors for all students, staff, and visitors. During lunch and outdoor activities, masks will be optional for students. On buses, masks are required, and as far as screening and testing for COVID-19 goes, Hazlitt schools are waiting for additional guidance from the Ingham County Health Department before deciding. For students with medical exemptions, mask waivers are available to fill out. Okemos schools talked about masking during their July 26th board meeting, where the board was all in support of masks for this coming school year. Their last update for the safe return to school plan was on April 12th, so the decision for masks is still up in the air. We are staying in school for this next story. Our own Katie Schroeder talked with Michigan Education Association spokesperson David Krim about the upcoming school year and the teacher shortage crisis. Well, the, the, the biggest struggle uh, and obstacle that school districts are facing is finding enough educators, uh, specifically teachers, although bus drivers are very hard to come by as well. But we, prior to the pandemic, Katie, we were experiencing a severe uh, teacher shortage. It has now become a crisis. Uh, prior to the, for the 10 years uh, leading up to the pandemic, one in five new teachers had been leaving the classroom in the first five years. Krim said that's not the only concern for schools. Education funding has been greatly cut during the pandemic, with over a million dollars being taken due to a tax cut. Krim said that with in-person learning around the corner, teachers are ready to see the kids face to face, and he wants the community to recognize the hard work that teachers and school staff have done throughout this year. To see the full interview with Katie, please visit hometv.net. Recently, the Michigan Education Trust hosted a pizza party at the state capitol. Attendees paid a $5 fee, which got them a slice of pizza, a soda or cut water, a cookie, and an entry ticket to a raffle. The money raised will be going to fund scholarships for students that have experienced foster care. I think it's really important because youth who have experienced foster care, a lot of times they want to be able to continue on with their education, but they don't necessarily have the means to do so. So these scholarships can be used for tuition, room and board, really any expense that they need to attend college. Around 250 people attended the event and they were able to raise over $1,300. Are you tired of construction? If so, good news, you won't have to for much longer. Lucy Van Ragamorter has more. All Meridian Township road projects are expected to be completed by the end of the summer or early fall. Many projects have taken longer than expected to complete due to weather factors. Appreciate everyone's patience, but that's unfortunately with all the rain we had, you know, if you get an hour of rain, it basically, we lose a whole day worth of work, uh, depending on whether we're pouring concrete or what we're doing on the, the paving portion, so. The remaining roads that require milling will be milled this week, and base paving will be added to the roads that have been milled already. Restoration on the earlier Crush and Shake Street projects will also begin this week, which includes restoring lawns and finishing up driveway impacts for residents. All we ask is uh, 
for some grace from our residents and uh, come this fall when everyone has brand new roads, uh, it'll all be worth it. In Meridian Township, Lucy Van Ergenmorder. For information and updates on road projects, visit www.meridian.mi.us. Last week, the environmental coordinator of Meridian Township, Leroy Harvey, gathered alongside two gardeners from the Bertram Retirement Community at the Park Lake Roundabout in order to place some rocks painted by the volunteers at the retirement home. The painted rocks serve as ground markers for the gardeners to assist in the removal of harmful weeds and plants growing during the spring season, as well as improving the aesthetic look of the roundabout. This roundabout was built as a demonstration of ecological restoration and neighborhood beautification. It features native plants, recycled materials, and water-conserving features that help with flood control and the health of the ecosystem. This is kind of a demonstration garden. It's a pollinator-friendly habitat. We've had a lot of different businesses and organizations assist with establishing this site. And we hope to see a lot more. Um, there's dozens of them around the township. This one's per particularly visible. And we do need volunteers to help with weeding occasionally. Um, but we re really would like to help people just start their own rain garden or their own pollinator habitat in their own backyard or front yard. Um, so it's something everyone can do. It's just a way to diversify the landscape a little bit. The rain absorbs and purifies the rain and storm water, demonstrating a type of green infrastructure, which improves water quality and reduces flooding in the Red Cedar River, while greatly improving traffic flow and safety. The Park Lake Roundabout is one of many sites around Meridian Township that are maintained by volunteers learning about the environment. The Village of Okemos project in downtown Okemos finished demolition earlier this year, but now many residents are left wondering what is the next step. Neighborhood and Economic Direct Development Director Amber Clark has more. So since the second amendment for the MUPUD was received at the township in June by the development team, the Community Development Director Tim Schmidt has given a partial approval for this site. That means that this is block B and Block A will still require buildings on Hamilton Road, where we're standing right now, to wrap around on Okemos Road. Those are required conditions of the approved MUPUD. It will allow for surface parking instead of a parking structure, and it will allow for phase development for residential buildings to be placed on Ardmore, just behind me. To see our full interview with Amber, head over to the Meridian Township YouTube page. The Zoning Board of Appeals met last night to discuss new and unfinished business. One of the main topics was a proposed car wash located at 2703 East Grand River Avenue on the corner of Don Avenue. The main concern for this project was the safety of the entrance from Grand River. We were concerned with the number of variances to begin with, we're back to three variances. We were concerned with some of the you know, other um, traffic issues and things like that, and we're back to safety issues. So that's, I mean, for me, I think that where, where we've come to, as far as having the three variances we have in front of us, I, they're, they're, they're minimal actions, I would, I would say, if we weren't talking about this traffic safety concern. Um, I mean, the speed of this road right here concerns me. It's 45. There is a traffic light, but it's quite a ways down because it's all the way at um, Whole Foods, or I'm sorry, the opposite direction in there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a concern for me. Ultimately, the board approved the variances for the project. The next step in this process is for the company to apply for a building permit. If you've been looking for an environmentally friendly way to get rid of old televisions, phones, computers, and more, look no further. Regional Electronic Recycling Day takes place in Meridian Township on September 18th. Home TV spoke with Meridian Township's Environmental Programs Coordinator, Leroy Harvey, again to find out more about the event. Um, pretty much everything. There's a few things, items that are mostly plastic, like uh, vacuum cleaners, um, coffee pots, things like that we, we really can't deal with. Um, air conditioners, no, probably not. Um, but most things with a cord would be acceptable. 
Um, we're not taking any batteries and we're not taking any lighting or smoke detectors, but things like TVs, um, monitors, computers, printers, cables, phones, stereo systems, VCRs, um, typewriters, all kinds of uh, electronic equipment. Okay. Regional Electronic Recycling Day will take place from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Chippewa Middle School. August 3rd was National Night Out. 23 neighborhood events spread across the Meridian and Williamston townships celebrated the community and invited the police and firefighters out for a night of food and fun. National Night Out is held annually on every first Tuesday of August. This was Officer Taya Catherwood's first National Night Out. This is my first time doing the National Night Out, but it gives the community a chance to come out here and talk with all of our officers, all of our fighter fighters, uh, EMS, kind of get to ask us questions. We get to show off our police cruisers, the fire trucks come through. So it's really just, it allows the community to reach out to us. We're here celebrating our police officers and our firefighters. We've invited them out. Obviously, we have a, a big tent set up for our residents to let them come out and enjoy. We've got some nice ice cream and some drinks and just having a good time celebrating the National Night Out. to set sail because our last story is about the Lansing Sailing Club. I had the pleasure of going out to the club and talking with members about what the club had to offer. Take a look. The Lansing Sailing Club was founded in 1963. It's a not-for-profit sailing club with a focus on racing sailboats, um, day sailing, family sailing, and sailing education. We race the large sailboats, the 19-foot lightnings, um, Sunday afternoons. Um, we, that's championship series, so that's the whole summer we do that, and then there's awards at the end. On Wednesday nights we race um, the Lasers, which is a, 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 an Olympic single-handed sailing boat. So that's one person per boat, um, and Sunfish. We're kind of an unknown entity around the community, and uh, it's sort of for a, for a sailor, or somebody who likes the water, it's kind of a gem right in your own town here. In order to use the Lansing Sailing Club's facilities, a membership must be purchased. The associate membership includes the use of the club's boats and kayaks for sailing, crewing, and enjoying time on the water. The full membership is for boat owners who wish to bring their boats onto Lake Lansing for racing or just enjoying the water. Although a membership must be purchased, some club members said it's like you're joining a large sailing family. It's just a great place for people to come and hang out, and it's a very kid-friendly zone. People are really accepting of kids, and you don't even have to sail. You can just come and kayak or paddleboard. It brings everybody together. You know, it's just a place for everybody just to hang out, do a cookout, or just like hang out with the family by the lake. It's just a big family club. In Hazlitt, Elena Cusino, Home TV. The Lansing Sailing Club is located at 6039 East Lake Drive in Hazlitt. That's all for today's episode of Meridian News Now. Remember, you can stay up to date with Township News by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, hometv.net. I'm Elena Cusino. Thanks for watching and have a great day.